In the 1990s, Georgetown was such a vibrant place to be because of all of the uncertainty and this new world order that everyone was talking about. The Cold War had just come to an end. In 1989, the wall fell, and the international system seemed to be undergoing a fundamental change. The economy was really hurting, and the job prospects for students, for instance, was, hey, you know, would there be jobs for us when we, when we graduated? My freshman year at Georgetown was in the middle of the Gulf War. I remember half of my classmates and I all registered for the Selective Service. And in the midst of this comes this very, very young politician, a man out of Arkansas, but most importantly, a son of Georgetown. Bill Clinton's candidacy kind of started off, I think, as a cool thing, but eventually ended up electrifying this campus. In the fall of 1991, I was the managing editor of the Hoya, and we got word that uh, a governor from a state, I don't know, maybe Mississippi or something, was gonna come uh, and give a speech. And it turns out that it was not the governor of Mississippi, it was the governor of Arkansas, and his name was Bill Clinton. We simply have to go beyond the competing ideas of the old political establishment. And I sat there in that first New Covenant speech that he delivered in Gaston Hall, and I was amazed. I believe that the only way we can hold this country together and move boldly into the future is to do it together with a New Covenant. There was a generational disconnect, and I think there was a real hunger for some sort of change. That didn't get picked up by a lot of the professional political class, but I think that Bill Clinton picked up on that. Governor Clinton at the time had an energy, a hope that things could be better. The Georgetown students for Bill Clinton had t-shirts and on the back they said, Princeton had Wilson, Harvard had JFK and FDR, but Clinton came from Georgetown. And that was uh, really how we felt. Because he was a son of Georgetown, because he was educated in the School of Foreign Service, Georgetown owned it. The idea that, uh, you know, Hoya could actually the elected president was pretty exciting and I got a lot of students really like myself really interested in it. Regardless of where they were on the ideological spectrum and I think you saw a lot more involvement in the 1992 campaign as a result of that. Good evening. Governor Bill Clinton hopes for a big win as the polls are clogged with voters. I'm Gina Curry. I'm Andy Pearson and welcome to the beginning of our coverage of the 92 vote. Election night 1992, uh, obviously one of the most important nights in my life. It really did kind of change my life. There were two competing election night watch parties that night. College Republicans was a very proper affair, whereas the College Democrats uh, watch party was just around the corner in what was then the, the campus pub. All of us were watching the election returns. At this moment, 40% to 43%. There's always a degree of anxiousness um, on election night. It was kind of getting a little close, and then we saw him sort of break away with some states. And when they finally called it, the place just erupted. Together we can make the country that we love, everything it was meant to be. I still believe in a place called home. God bless America. Thank you all. The energy, the excitement, tears of joy, people jumping up and down. And we knew that a Hoya would be in the Oval Office. That youth, that energy, that optimism is what inspired so many of us. Bill Clinton made politics real for me. I think it reinvigorated our students to continue to pursue careers in public service. Georgetown has always had a sense of mission that an education here could lead to an opportunity to, to make a difference. So I think in some ways, all of those steps I took professionally and have taken, I trace back to being absolutely fascinated with this guy from Hope, Arkansas, who came to Gaston Hall to give that first New Covenant speech.